Hi guys, I am Dr. Heather Hirsch. Welcome to my channel. I am a menopause expert. Over my lifetime, I have opened, launched two menopause clinics and now work at Midi Health, which is a virtual platform designed to help women with perimenopause and menopause. And today we're answering a really important question that I see plastered all over social media, which is how to interpret your lab work. In my opinion, the reason so many people want to learn how to do this themselves is that menopause and perimenopause is so often misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed in general, and therefore women want to be able to answer those questions for themselves and tell their doctor what they have. So I see a lot of crowdsourcing of people putting their lab work up and asking what it means. It's a little more complicated than just a yes or no, so that's what we're going to dive into. I'm going to start by saying that Unfortunately, as I alluded to, lab work in menopause is not a black and white answer. In fact, I'm gonna go so far as to say that lab work is not as helpful as your clinical symptoms. Lab work is not as helpful. So even if you put up lab work, what I'm going to ask next to that lab work is what are your periods doing? If you don't have periods, however, let's say you have a progesterone releasing IUD, you've had an ablation or hysterectomy, that certainly won't be able to apply to you. But if you are a woman who still has periods and menstruating, you're going to want to make sure that you are interpreting your labs with the context of what your periods are also doing because your periods are going to trump your lab work. Okay? And to say it again, your periods are going to trump your lab work. Let's start by defining what menopause is. Menopause is defined by the textbook as 12 months of no periods. Because the period history is gonna trump the lab work, that's really the very first key in diagnosing menopause, 12 months of no periods. The second thing you will see in your labs that is really helpful is your follicle stimulating hormone level or FSH for short. Typically, if you are postmenopausal, which you always are after that one year of no periods, your FSH will be above 35. And in all honesty, typically clinically, it's much closer to 80, 90, 100. The higher your FSH doesn't mean the worse that it is, but a elevated FSH with those double digits into triple digits is consistent with menopause. At the same time, your estrogen level postmenopausally is usually between zero and 20. So some women make trace amounts of estrogen, but again, compared to what you made premenopausally, an estrogen level of 50 to 500, an estrogen level between zero and 20 overall is really quite low. Now where this gets confusing is if someone puts up an FSH level of 45 and says, am I postmenopausal? The question is, again, have you gone 12 months without a period? Because periods are always going to trump what your FSH level is doing. So even if that FSH level is high, if you haven't gone 12 months without a period, then you are not yet menopausal. So see here in this example that all you really need to know is actually your periods and that will tell you if you are in menopause or if you are in perimenopause. Notice in this last example, I also didn't discuss a luteinizing hormone or LH level, a testosterone level, or a progesterone level. They're not important. The most important is just your FSH and your estrogen. And I would even go so far as to argue that the FSH level is actually the only level that you really need with what your periods are doing. And again, I would actually argue that your FSH level is really the most important director or data point to know where you are in your menopausal journey. If you are wondering if you are in perimenopause, it's really, really crucial that if you get nothing from this video, it's that perimenopause is a clinical diagnosis, meaning I am the clinician. I decide. A clinical diagnosis means that it is a series of symptoms as well as perhaps physical signs, i.e. your period history, that defines if you are in perimenopause. There is no lab test under the sun that will diagnose you with perimenopause. And that's really important to know because it's going to alleviate you from that stress of posting in that Facebook group, what do my labs mean? Because your labs will not define perimenopause. 
The symptoms that describe perimenopause are as follows. Any change to your periods, whether it be when or how frequent they come, how heavy or how light they are, and any PMS symptoms that go along with that is a clear sign that this is perimenopause. Other symptoms that will clue you into perimenopause are the same symptoms of menopause, but ones that you are experiencing while you're still getting your periods. So hot flashes, night sweats, brain fog, weight gain, vaginal dryness, all of these, when they start to happen in the years leading up to the average age of menopause, which is 51, 51 and a half in the United States, is perimenopause. It's frustrating because you might really want to cinch that diagnosis of perimenopause. It's validating. It helps to determine and name what those symptoms are and actually cluster them all together as opposed to treating each one individually. But the problem is that there is no lab test. There is no number. There is nothing like an A1C for diabetes or a blood pressure like there is for hypertension to define perimenopause. It is up to your doctor. But if your doctor is not really competent in this area, feel free to diagnose yourself. Now let's look at labs in perimenopause. Labs in perimenopause are really not all that helpful at just a snapshot in time. They can be helpful over time or over many years, but the diagnosis of both menopause and perimenopause are retrospective, meaning by the time you're 60 and we look backwards, we will be able to know exactly when you were in perimenopause or give or take, okay? And we will know when menopause was, and again, after that, you are always postmenopausal. But because it's a constantly evolving thing, in the moment, it's really hard to know. So that's what makes lab work not all that helpful. But again, women do get do get curious or they get hung up on this, but lab work in perimenopause is never going to be abnormal. Your doctor's always going to say your levels look normal because there is no abnormality here when you are in perimenopause. That's not what your labs are really meant to show you. So this will be made easier if I give you some examples. So let's say I say, see a woman in my clinic. She says her periods are becoming more irregular. She's starting to get hot flashes the week before her period. And her FSH is 14, which is again below that 35, and her estrogen level is 100. What does that tell me? Nothing. Really doesn't tell me anything, except I know she's not menopausal. But I already knew that because she hasn't gone 12 months without having a period. So in this case, again, labs are not helpful to define perimenopause. But as a clinician, I know she's in perimenopause because now her symptoms are changing and she's starting to get those states of volatility in that estrogen level, causing those hot flashes and night sweats. All right, let's use another example. Let's say I have a patient who hasn't had a period in three or four months. Her FSH level comes back at 60 and her estrogen level comes back at 10. Those levels look exactly like someone who is postmenopausal, but she is not postmenopausal because the longest she's gone is three months without a period. Could she never get a period again? Sure. Could she get a period again? Sure. We don't know. So by labs alone, I would not diagnose her as being menopausal. She really has to hit that 12 months of no periods before she is postmenopausal. So there, and again, the labs are more data, but they're not defining the situation. Your clinical symptoms are, and me as your clinician also are. Notice again that I don't need levels like an LH, testosterone, progesterone. Again, simply not helpful. Those levels bounce around all the time. They're doing whatever they want whenever we capture them, and they're just not needed. Your FSH, your estrogen, and your period history are the most crucial. What if you're one of those few women who do not get periods? You might be frustrated through this whole video because I'm always telling you that periods are trumping your lab work. But in your particular case, you cannot use your period history. So you have to go by symptoms and you can use your labs to guide you. So let me give you an example. Let's say I have a 47 year old woman with uh, who has had a hysterectomy, who's having hot flashes and night sweats. I might get her FSH and it's 14. Two months later, it might be 60. Two months later, it might be 54. Two months later, it might be 13. She's probably in perimenopause because I'm watching that FSH go up and down. She had her ovaries left in, in this example, which I didn't tell you until now, so she's still making some estrogen. 
and I would treat her as if she were perimenopausal. Of course, in that example, if that patient who didn't have a uterus but her ovaries were removed, she would already have been in menopause because menopause is when both of your ovaries are removed. That's the definition of surgical menopause. So that makes it very easy. In fact, you know the exact day and probably the hour that you went into menopause. Same idea if someone has a progesterone releasing IUD and they don't get any periods. They still have their uterus, they still have their ovaries, and I would check those FSH levels over time, but really kind of watch her symptoms. So if I have someone who had an IUD inserted three years ago, she's now 51, she's coming to me with significant hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, her FSH is 130. Well, I can't use her periods, but it sounds really classically like she is either in late perimenopause or menopause. And again, I'm just going to treat her symptoms. And with women who don't have periods to kind of use, you just treat the symptoms. And even though you might not know exactly when menopause was because you don't have that period to guide you, getting your symptoms treated trumps knowing the exact day that menopause happened. Unfortunately, as of yet, we don't get mailed any awards or trophies about what menopause is, but in life, in theory, if you are feeling well, if you are thriving, if you are doing well, to me, that's the same thing as winning and getting a trophy in the mail. If you guys really like this video, please hit that like button. Please leave a comment down below about how frustrating it has been to determine if you're in menopause or perimenopause. All those things really help this channel grow, which I am so thankful for your support in. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful to remind you that Although we wish there was a magic number that could say you are in menopause or this is perimenopause, unfortunately there is no such thing. But now you know that by tracking your periods and by tracking your symptoms and by potentially watching your FSH over time, you can help diagnose those. And be sure to not just focus on your numbers or your FSH, but how you actually feel. 100% of women who live long enough will go through perimenopause and will go through menopause. So if you think that's what it is, trust me, it probably is. If you don't have a good doctor in your area, you can always check out the menopause.org website or go to joinmini.com. The link is down below. We are opening in many, many, many states in 2023, and we would love to see you as a patient. Thank you guys so much for supporting my YouTube channel. Please give me a like or please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. And I can't wait for next week's brand new episode.